Good day, everyone. Uh, today, we'll talk about characterization in your stories. Uh, so maybe you got the right formula for, for storytelling. Uh, you got your premise right, the jolt or the inciting incident, um, the, the hook no? or the reason why your audience would follow your story or your reader would continue reading your script. And then you have an interesting conflict, no? a problem with a burden or an obstacle or a barrier no? for the character to be able to solve the problem that easily. And then you have the right resolution. Okay? However, in your pitch or during the consultation, uh, maybe your story is not working no and part of it is because you don't have an interesting character or the character might not be relatable to your audience or worse uh, your reader would not sympathize no with your character okay so we'll discuss the three components uh in a character no uh, we'll go through it one by one, and then uh, we'll look at a sample film, no? uh, in this case, uh, Tangi Yaman, and then summarize it by looking at another sample, a French film, and then uh, summing up everything no? on how to make the protagonist uh, sympathetic. Okay? So, so the character, the fictional character here can be represented in this way. No? You might have uh, around 10 to 15% of the character no? uh, easily uh, recognizable no? to the audience. It was presented uh, in a clear manner and usually this is the physical component. Okay, so... For example, if we saw that the character is played by Angel Oxin or Coco Martin, we already have an idea no, of what Angel Oxin or even Coco Martin can do. Okay? And uh, depending on whether we're fans of the, of the actors, no, we'll be able to uh, relate not to the character or not okay so and then later on once we get to know more no, about the character through his or her actions through his or her dialogues or even as the story goes no if you still haven't written your script no we'll uh, know around 20 to 25 percent okay and around 60 to 70 percent no, of the character we do not need to know this at all no because they wouldn't help no the the writer it wouldn't help you in um coming up no with a better story or sometimes they're actually not needed at all all right so and we'll also notice that in a lot of interesting films, no. Uh, some characters have uh, some easily recognizable trait, and then later on, no, uh, the writer would deliberately come up with a piece of trait, no, which runs counter to what we know about this particular character, okay. So, as mentioned earlier, no, the easiest to recognize no, among the different components or the different dimensions of a character is the physical component or the physical data. Okay? So, this is everything that we see no, on screen okay, with regards to the physical characteristics of the character. So, you might know the sex. No? Uh, the age, the built, and even the bearing, right? 
uh, physical attributes. No, however, this uh, depends no on the audience uh, what he or she finds attractive or unattractive no in in the character. Uh, we'll notice the color and style of the hair. No, maybe you notice this when you watch uh um run lola run no if you're familiar with the german film no franca potentes character because all throughout the film uh she just runs and runs no to be able to save her boyfriend manny so they decided to color her hair red because it's more striking while she's running okay and then we also had the typical clothing and condition of clothing. So in the uh, previous lecture on visual devices and storytelling, you know, we were able to differentiate uh, Leonardo, Rafael, Donatello, and Michelangelo you know, uh, from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because of their masks. Okay, And sometimes... Uh, the writer would come up with a different characteristic or a trait you now which runs counter to how uh, the character would look like okay so uh, in this case uh, later on surprising the audience you now because of their previous expectations from the character and then we have the gestures and mimicry, you no, know, and this discuss uh, on the visual devices uh, pertaining to the action or the business of the character, and also the way of talking. Okay, so if the character has an accent, a slang, a articulation, um, sometimes some actors tend to over overact no or overreact just to point out no whether uh, a character has this uh, particular intonation in the way he or she speaks and then of course uh, any physical defects no whether deformities or an illness okay so in my case if you notice no I have this fistula because uh, before I used to have a kid uh, dialysis no, before my kidney transplant. Okay, so if you see something like this, so this is a an AV fistula. Okay, we're in uh, you join the artery in the vein, or the they bent the artery so, so that the blood will be able to uh, flow faster, you no, know, through the dialysis machine. And then later on, uh, when we get to know the story. Now we'll have the sociological data or we'll know more about the relationship of the character to other characters. Okay? So uh, we may learn about the ethnic background and nationality of the character, the social class, no? sometimes even the education, whether he or she finished uh, high school, college, or just elementary level or didn't study at all or didn't. A graduate at all no, from uh, any level no and then we also have uh, the profession will know whether he or she is a student or he or she uh, works at the call center or is a teacher no, for example uh, and in the visual devices and storytelling we'll learn that jake gyllenhaal's character in enemy is a history teacher because of what he discusses in class and what he writes down on the board. And he also learned about Coach Carter you know, being a basketball coach and at the same time stressing the value of education to the varsity team, to the basketball players. Okay, and uh, we'll also learn about the living conditions you know, and sometimes... Uh, especially the social climbers now if your character is a social climber uh like angel looks in's character in one film um she asked the the would-be boyfriend uh, played by oyo or oyo boy soto to 
just drop her off at the gate of the subdivision, no? And pretending that she lives in that subdivision. And then later on, when Oyo's character uh, leaves the gate of the subdivision, uh, Angel Luxin's character will walk towards another direction, going to uh, her character's uh, uh, original house, no? uh, in turn, uh, in the shanties. Okay, so uh, you'll also get to know no, if uh, the members of the family or if the character is married or single, if he or she has children and relations with other family members. In our example later on, uh, on Tanging Yaman, we'll get to know the members of the family and the three branches of that particular family. Okay? And in uh, the usual star cinema, romantic comedy films now you always have uh, members of the family supporting one or both of the characters in the love team because uh, the mission vision of star cinema centers on uh, family that's why it's called kapamilya diba? so uh, later on now when uh, ABS-CBN realized that uh, some uh, members of the audience are not inclined to watch uh, star cinema films because of that particular characteristic. They came up with uh, other labels, in particular Black Sheep, no? Cinema One Originals, and Cinebro. Okay? And we'll also get to know about friends. No? That's why uh, we usually label Kai Cortez as the pambansang uh, best friend. Oh, before it used to be Matet de Leon or even Kakay uh, Bautista. Okay. So we have the hobbies, the interests, no? the political views and affiliations, and the religious views and affiliations. No? So if uh, your story is not a political one, maybe you will not uh, need, no? you won't need... Uh, showing the political views and affiliations of the character. And if your uh, story is not a religious drama like uh, Tang Yaman, you might not need to uh, reveal to the audience what religion your character has. No? And uh, finally, the name, no? since it's provided no, by another person, it falls under sociological data. You wouldn't know that my name is Seymour just by looking at me. Okay? So I told you that my name is Seymour. And uh, usually, uh, those names came from uh, a popular character or a popular celebrity during the time of our birth. Or in the case of writers, they use names to associate it to a particular trait so for example coming up with the name angel no, for an angelic character or lucy for uh coming from lucifer no from a an evil character or a satanic character or sometimes no the character would confuse the audience by naming the good character lucy and the the bad character angel Okay. In the case of Lobo, the soap opera, Angel Luxin's character is named Laika no? because her character transforms no? from a human being to an animal, a werewolf. And Piolo Pascual's character is named after Noah no? in Noah's art, Noah's art because the role of Noah in Lobo is to save the white wolves. No? Yung mga pulang, puting Lobo. Okay. And... Uh, protect them from the black wolves. Okay, so similar to what Noah did in the Noah's Ark story. Okay, and what makes your uh, protagonist no more interesting is the third component or the third uh, dimension, which we call the psychological component, the psychological data. Uh, this component reveals no your character's uh, emotional baggage. Uh, inner motivations, no? ambitions, no? what is uh, his or her motivation in studying, for example, in trying to graduate, you have different 
uh, motivations no, as students, uh, maybe you have uh, the same outer motivation, which is to pass the subject and later on to graduate. But you have different inner motivations. Some students would just like to pass the subject just to complete it or would like to attend the class to get to know other people or would attend class before. No, if uh, When we used to have physical classes, you would attend class because you would like to get your allowance or you would like to... Um, be in an air-conditioned room no, if your classroom has one, okay? Or uh, you get to meet your friends. And for some, they get to meet their, they get to see their crush no, in, in the classroom, okay? However, no, if your outer, your inner motivation is deeper than just uh what was what were mentioned earlier you know, because for example you want to prove something to your parents that uh you're worthy of their attention you no know? uh like what they give to your older or younger siblings that's a deeper um inner motivation all right for your character so you have ambitions uh, frustrations, no? Frustrations may serve as the barrier, the obstacle, or uh, a source of conflict no? for your story. Okay, so it's everything that prevents your uh, character no? from achieving his or her goal okay? or solving his or her problem. Okay, and then of course, we might give your as a writer no you might give your character dreams no which they might think unattainable no at first and then later on if you would like to come up with a happy ending no you would uh make the character realize this particular dream okay make this dream come true in your story of course, you also have personal weaknesses. Now you have temperament, uh, you have phobias. Uh, your character might be intelligent, you know, like in the case of the characters in Bad Genius, you know, but they're using it in the wrong way. Okay? But still, because they're intelligent you know, and they're smart and they're using this to outwit, for example, the institution or the system, uh, you're uh, cheering for them in Bad Genius. Okay? And we'll also have attitude toward life. No? Your character might be optimistic, pessimistic, rebellious, happy, altruistic, and, or even selfish. Okay? And then we have the fundamental values. No? Uh, what do you hold dear? No? Or what does your character hold dear in the story? No? Is it the family? Now, for example, if you've seen OTJ, although you have characters who are assassins no, and uh, played by Joel Torre and uh, Gerald Anderson, no, by showing uh, th their side no, in the side of the fam their family life, no, we got to sympathize with them, although they're killers. Okay? So... Uh, we might also show no, uh, how hard a person works to achieve that particular goal. Okay? And then you have romantic sexual disposition, like, for example, Christian Grey no, in Fifty Shades of Grey. No? And even complexes, no? uh, like Oedipus Complex. Or inhibitions, phobias, no? fears. Like, for example, in Pretty Woman, Richard Gere's character is afraid of heights. Okay, and uh, a lot of films now which came out, uh, writers tend to assign a rare sickness, okay, whether it's reverse amnesia in the case of Jerome Ponce's character in Finding You, okay, or face blindedness or face blindness in the case of James de Guzman's character in 
uh, kung paano siya nawala. Okay? Or even uh, the characters in The Fault in Our Stars. Okay? And then, uh, your character might have a special talent. Although Russell Crowe's character in A Beautiful Mind, uh, Smoothie has mental problems, is very bright. No? And uh, solving problems no? is good in what he's doing. Okay? Uh, it might be a special talent in music. It might be a special talent in sport. Like, for example, in Tonya, it's uh, Tonya Harding's story no? as a skater. Okay? Although, in real life, we got to know that she's the antagonist. Okay? And uh, in that particular uh, event, okay, or in that particular incident in a sports event, okay. So because we're working for the visual medium, whether it's for film, for TV, for a multimedia arts project, no, we need to show these characteristics. As much as possible, show them. Do not tell them. No, do not uh, just resort to the character explaining himself or herself or telling other characters what his or her traits are. Okay? So by showing them, uh, coming from the visual devices in storytelling um, uh, lecture, no, uh, we might be able to show the traits through action okay so for example if your character is angry or mad towards another character he or she might throw things at him or at the other character no, that's through action or in the case of uh, uh po, john lloyd's character popoy in one more chance no he removes the chicken skin now, before he serves it to Bea, Bea's character, uh, Basha. Okay. However, uh, some might interest, uh, might interpret it as sweet, but in the case of One More Chance, it's actually uh, more of uh, Popoy's character being controlling of his relationship with Basha. Okay. True reaction. No, if the person reacts to what the character is doing or does. No, it's a reaction of another character. Like for example, how did Basha react? No, when Popoy removed the chicken skin. Okay, it might be the uh, last straw or the final nail in the coffin, so to speak. Okay, before uh, she was convinced, no, to 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 have that break up you no know, with with Popoy. Okay? Or sometimes we might just look at other people. No? If you have your main characters quarreling, let's look at their friends' reactions. Okay? So while Popoy and Basha are fighting, no, in one more chance, how did their friends react? Who sided with Popoy and who sided with Basha? That's what we mean by through the reactions of others. Of course, not all of this can be uh, shown visually. No, you can uh, let your character deliver it as a dialogue. However, do not just make the dialogue on the nose uh, or uh, direct to the point. Okay, uh, if ever. No, just to add more meaning to the dialogue, no, add subtext to the dialogue. Okay, so instead of just saying uh, "mahal kita," okay, the character might say "mahal kita," but actually uh, he or she hated that person. Okay, or vice versa, he or she is telling uh, the other character, "I hate you." No. Di kita gusto when in fact it actually means uh, he or she loves the character. Okay, so yun, parang true dialogue. 
Okay. And then uh, from the visual devices and storytelling, we also learned that we learn more about the character through his appearance, clothes, and characteristic patterns of behavior, you know, props of character, relationship to props like in props for trigger, for example, in gas cigarette, you know, in uh, the fault in our stars, or uh, baby driver's uh, MP4. I, uh, player as something which uh, keeps him you no know, focus in driving and then when later on when it was removed uh, similarly when gas cigarettes or pack of cigarettes got lost in uh, the fault in our stars you no know, it triggered a series of uh, emotions or series of uh, actions you no know, coming from the character Okay, and ironically, they were both played by Ansel Elgort. Okay, it can also be through his relationship to his setting, or in Filipino, it's ano parang your namamahay, diba? Uh, if you visited a friend's house and you slept over, and then, uh, hindi ka mapupu, for example, no? namamahay ka. Okay, because you're not used to that particular setting or that particular house. Or for example, if uh, you're a fish out of the water, no? you used to study in the province and then later on, you're now studying in Metro Manila and you're not used to that environment at the start. Okay, that's true. You can show that through the character's relationship to the setting. Okay. And through contrast with what others do, like for example, if all people are going this way, no, in San Andreas, all people are avoiding, no, uh, most of the people are avoiding the earthquake or the damage brought by the earthquake, they're going this way. Your main character, and uh, played by Alexander Daddario, no, and the two boys, the two brothers with him are going this way no, because Dwayne Johnson or the Rock's character. No, who plays uh, the rock who plays uh, Alexander's father no, in the character of Alexander's father no, in San Andreas told them to look for the highest building in San Andreas and it's situated this way so they were running towards the opposite direction okay so or for example if uh, you were told to uh, review a film okay, or express your reaction towards a film. No? If most of your classmates would come up with uh, a written essay, no, you would come up with an illustration or a video. Okay, So that's contrast with what others do. And similarly, no, you can also uh, show this through the name of the character. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, no, a trait of the character is often enhanced if the person is allowed to uh, display minor traits okay, which contradict the main attribute. So I mentioned earlier, no, if you have assassins played by Joel Torre and Gerald Anderson in OTJ, okay, so uh, they were given... Uh, not so ordinary no, na, na characteristics. No? Uh, maybe you might uh, give the character a trait like he or she is thoughtful okay, and loving in certain situations. Like they cared for their family. And uh, in OTJ, it was shown that they were being duped by their family members. So although they're killers, no, uh, the audience tend to uh, develop a uh, some sort of sympathy or care no, for the characters. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, no, I'll send you the, the supercut version of Tanging Yaman, which is uh, 25 minutes long, around 25 minutes long. If ever you haven't seen the film, no, because we're using it as a case study in our discussion of characterization in film. Okay, so in Tanging Yaman, 
you have Dolores, uh, uh, played by Gloria Romero. She's 74 years old. Okay? So it's a physical characteristic. And then uh, sociological, no? uh, she is a widow. No? And she plays mother to uh, Danilo, uh, Gracia, and Arturo. No? Danilo here is played by the late uh, Johnny Delgado. Gracia is played by Dina Bonnevi and Arturo is played by uh, Edu Manzano. Okay, so after mentioning 74 years old, the age, no, which is physical, uh, we learned about a sociological component, a widow and a mother, okay, to three. And then later on, uh, we learned that, you know, if we're familiar with uh, Gloria Romero, she's mestiza, so that's physical. Anak mayaman, okay, so that's sociological uh, pertaining to uh, her social status. Educated, that's sociological. Uh, mabait na ina. And then religious, no, sociological. Uh, mahilig sa music and magkakasakit ng Alzheimer. This will serve as the jolt or the inciting incident in the story of Tanging Yaman. So, uh, the Alzheimer's disease in this case would be the barrier you know, for the character to uh, sign you know, the last will and testament. Okay? So as mentioned earlier, you, know, you have three branches of the family. The Pampanga branch of the family headed by Danilo, you know, played by the late Johnny Delgado. The LA branch of the family uh, with... Dina Bonivis character, Gracia, no, married to Joel Torres character. And then the Manila branch of the family, no, headed by Arturo, played by Edu Manzano. Okay, so if we look at uh, the Pampanga branch, this is where Dolores uh, is living. No? Before she found out no, that she has difficulty uh, Facing the food no, that would be that again would serve as the the inciting incident or the change in the usual routine of your character. So you have Johnny Delgado, the father. You have Hilda Coronel, the mother. You have Marvin Agustin, no, the the older sibling, the older sibling. You have Carol Banawa. No, uh, actually, she's the, just there to sing the theme song. <laughs> Talking, yeah. And then you have a young Shayna Magdayao. Okay. And uh, with her back to the camera is Dolores, now played by Gloria Romero. Okay. So you have Danny, 45 years old, eldest among the Rosales children. Uh, used to be the black sheep of the family. He was not able to finish uh, his studies. Uh, he now owns three tricycles, no? but they're old. And uh, he's good no, as a mechanic. And he lives together with his mother and his family. Okay? So uh, his other siblings, his younger siblings, don't trust him no, because he got his share of uh, their parents' uh, Riches, no, earlier, even without uh, the will and testament being signed. Okay, but he's a sweet and kind, no, uh, husband and father to his three children. Okay, and then you have Celine, played by Hilda Coronel, forty years old. Okay, so she's the wife of Danny. Okay. Uh, anak ng Kano, okay, Phil Am, uh, whom Danny met in Manila when they were still younger, okay, and they got married without the blessing of their parents, okay. So, uh, she's a good uh, daughter in law, a faithful wife, and uh, she knows how to take care of Danny her husband, and their three children. Okay? And she's a good cook. 
and she is industrious. Okay? And then you have Danilo Jr., played by Marvin Agustin, a 22 years old, uh, the oldest child. Okay? He's bright, ambitious, and uh, he idolizes his Tito Arturo, or Tito Art, okay? who's a lawyer, played by uh, Edo Manzano. He's a graduating student. Uh, the University of the Philippines. And then you have Chona, 16 years old, played by Carol Banawa. Okay. So she's good in music, like her Lola, Loling, Dolores. And same thing, from D. Okay. And religious. And then you have Karina, played by a young Shayna Magdayaw, Kakai, 8 years old. She's always with her Lola. Okay. So... She's kind, uh, Bibo, Makulit, and the baby of the family. And then when we go to the LA branch, we have the Alonzos no? uh, with Gracia, no? played by Dina Bonivi, or Grace Rosales Alonzo, married to uh, Joel Torres' character. Okay? So she's the youngest child of Loling, of Dolores. Mestizahin, nakapagtapos sa isang exclusive girls' school in Manila. Okay, spoiled, pampered. Uh, she defied her father, uh, mother by following the dictates of her heart and marrying her college sweetheart na hindi mayaman. She migrated to America and then she got out of shape. You know? Her beauty faded, but still you know, she blames her husband for their fate. Okay? So the husband here is played by uh, Joel Torre is Francis, 40 years old, uh, very Pinoy features. Uh, and then uh, if you've seen the film, he works at LBC <laughs> for product placement. Uh, so it's kind, industrious, understanding, similar to uh, Danilo's character. So despite the years, uh, he's still in love no, with Grace, a loving father to uh, their two children. Okay? And he always defends Grace, no, uh, his wife, no, from their children, Madeline, seventeen years old, and Andrew, fifteen years old. All right, so Madeline looks like her mom, looks like Grace. And there's, uh, spoiler alert, no, there's a particular scene in the film because the Lola, Loling, Dolores has Alzheimer's. Now he will, uh, she will, uh mistakenly call no Madeline as Grace okay, her daughter okay so calling the granddaughter her daughter because they look alike okay and then you have Andrew 15 years old studios quiet cute and the baby of her mommy in this case Gracia and then finally you have the Manila branch you have Edu Manzano playing Arturo the lawyer no was the idol of uh, Marvin Agustin's character, uh, Danilo Jr. Okay, so Art is 42 years old, the second child of Lawling. Okay, so he's a, a good lawyer, selfish, dominant. Okay, ang puso. Uh, he always believes that he's right. Okay, uh, hindi halata dahil suabe. How do you <laughs> show suabe? Okay, mukhang mabait. And then you have. Uh, his wife, no, played by Cherry Pie Picache, uh, Nanette, 39 years old, uh, Matalino, educated career woman. Okay, her work involves frequent trips to the provinces, assertive and confident in the workplace. Okay, but when it comes to the house, uh, she's subservient. Okay, she always follows art. Okay, and she's frustrated because their home life is not Harmonious. And then you have Romel, no, played by Jericho Rosales, the rebellious son. Okay, 20 years old uh, because the father, the lawyer, uh, wants his son to study medicine. But uh, Jericho's character really wants to be an artist. Okay? So you can't box him and then make Kim Kim nagalit sa ama. Pero matindi ang takot no, dun sa father. Okay? And is inclined into photography. And then you have a younger brother, John John, 12 years old. Uh, nerdy, 
uh, was to watch TV a lot, no? uh, well adjusted uh, to the family. Okay, and then you have other characters, Joel, 20 years old, Kababata ni Boyet. I think this is played by Dominic Ochoa. Okay, two year, uh, graduated with a two year course in marine engineering. Okay, and then waiting for uh, his documents to be approved. Okay, and then uh, he'll fall in love with Madeline, no, the the daughter from the U.S. Okay, and then you have Manang Gunding, 55 years old. Okay, she is the uh, house help. And then uh, during the jolt or the inciting incident, uh, Law Leng will keep on asking Manang Gunding to add more salt no, to their food because she can't taste it. All right? Actually, that's the time when they found out that Loling has Alzheimer's disease. All right? So Manang Gunding is like a member to, of the family. And then you have Father Lito. So uh, if you notice, no, if you're just dealing with the supporting characters, they have less no, na character traits or uh, less data okay, or components provided. Okay, so you have Father Lito, you're given his age and his work. Okay, so that's all. So usually it's either just one dimension if it's just an extra. No, usually physical component or supporting characters, two dimensions, the physical component and the job or the relationship to the main characters. Okay, so you have Father Lito, Priest, okay, you have Chris, uh, Danny's friend, no, a real estate agent. So again, the age and the occupation. Marta, 40 years old, uh, Katulong, so household help loyal pero sumpungin and then you have father perez 50 years old and dr arvisu lolings physician and then you have a lot of other characters all right chief of police young grace okay the girl at the skating ring uh if you're familiar with her she's in the phileo no but now uh stars in a lot of mainstream films and soap operas usually aired at GMA7. Okay, so Tanging Yaman's story revolves around three siblings who are now well settled with their respective families in widely contrasting lifestyles. The one common thing that binds them loosely together is the love that their mother holds for all of them, okay, albeit expressed in varying ways and degrees, but always equally nurturing and self-giving. Okay. So if you just focus on one family, like for example, if you just focus on the Pampanga branch of the family, Tangin Yaman would just be a short film. Now, similarly, if you would just focus on the LA family or the Manila branch of the family. Okay. But since you have three different families and you would, you know, the writer interconnected their families aside from, of course, they're related, no? uh, the, their siblings no? uh, of Loling, right, pertaining to the heads of the family. Even Gracia is considered the head of the family. Okay? So uh, the writer came out, came up with a full-length film or a, a material for a full-length film. Okay? Uh, connected by uh, their reaction no, when they found out that Loling, the matriarch, has Alzheimer's disease. Of course, it was not revealed no, how the father died or the patriarch. Okay? Was, uh, at the start, already, uh, already provided with no, the, the, the Pampanga branch of the family and then uh, Dolores character living with them no, pertaining to the Lola Loling, okay, played by Gloria Romero. Okay, and then this will uh, provided all their stories. No, this will all create a domino effect, a domino principle. Okay, and then of course, since this is a spiritual family drama, 
uh, you know that this is a story of hope and a story of change, no? transformation. Okay? So you have Gloria Romero playing Lo Leng, Johnny Delgado playing Danny, Hilda Coronel playing Celine, Dina Bonivy playing Grace, Joel Torre playing Francis, Edu Manzano playing Art or Arturo, Cherry Pai Picache playing Nanette, Marvin Agustin playing Boyet, Jericho Rosales playing Romel, CJ Ramos playing John John, Shaina Magdayo playing Karina or Kakai, John Prats playing Andrew, Carol Banawa playing Chona, and also singing the theme song of Tang Yaman, Dominic Ochoa playing Joel, and Janet McBride playing Madeline. Okay? So, uh, if you're just focused no, on a one part or one plot of the story, if you minimize the subplots no, similar to uh, your material no, for a short film or a PSA or uh, whatever uh, story concept no, you're working on, okay? uh, adding more subplots would uh, extend no, or would lengthen your, your material. Okay? If you're just limited to a short period of time, there's a tendency for us to work with stereotypes and to depend on uh, casting the right actor. Of course, a Tang Yaman would not be the same if those actors would not play their characters or other actors would play their characters. No? If other actors landed no, their roles or got their roles instead of them playing uh, the characters they had at Tang Yaman. Okay, so uh, what's the significance of characterization in film? Uh, maybe during the pitch, I ask you why did you just kill no, the, your main character okay, without any justification as to why that character was killed in the first place. Okay? So I got this from uh, Sir Ricky Lee's workshop. Okay? So uh, we might have a very uh, bad character in the onset. Okay? So you have uh, an assassin for a character or a very temperamental character. However, no, you can still make the protagonist sympathetic and or you can make your audience or your reader care for your character if the protagonist has skills. As an underdog, there's injustice, no? A uh, member of the noble family has nobility, has vulnerability, no? has an ongoing pain. Or there are other uh, characters who sympathize with him or her. Okay? So as mentioned earlier, you might have uh, Russell Crowe in a very temperamental in A Beautiful Mind or in Gladiator. Okay? But because of uh, his character skills, no, the audience ended up sympathizing with the character. Uh, you will have the underdog, no, the aping api, uh, naka experience ng all the injustices in life. No, sure formula yan. However, the usual formula na yan, and you wouldn't want to repeat the same formula over and over again. Okay, you might have a noble character. Okay, a prince or a princess or an heir to the throne. Diba? You're rooting for him or her. Okay, like, for example, Man in the Iron Mask. Okay. So, or uh, vulnerable, no? My ongoing pain, whether it's a disease, cancer, no? Or uh, phobia, fears. Uh, moving on from a breakup or still won't accept no, that his or her family left him or her. Okay? And then 
uh, even just one character would sympathize with your uh, character. Like, for example, in Maleficent, no, originally Maleficent is the villain. But later on, no, uh, in a reworking of of the same material, but from told from the point of view of the villain, now we got to know Maleficent more, and one character sympathize with her. In this case, it's Sleeping Beauty. I or if you're still familiar with uh, the soap opera which launched. Uh, Coco Martin to fame. You have Lola Gets always sympathizing with him. No, Lola Gets played by Gina Pareño. Okay? So, so if I reacted negatively no, to your pitch because you just killed no, a powerless character in your story without any justification whatsoever, just remember no, how to make your character sympathetic okay so how to uh get your audience no to care for your character all right so so if you haven't seen tanya yaman uh, you might be more familiar with four sisters in a wedding uh, you can work on the characterization of the different sisters no in four sisters in a wedding okay? it's played by uh, Be Alonzo, uh, China Magdayao, Tony Gonzaga, and Angel Oxin. Okay? So by getting to know more about our character, we got to know his or her inner story. So at first, if by outlining your story, you'll only present the physical story. Later on, if we, your audience or your reader will get to know the character, we will get to know his or her inner story or what we call the character journey. Right? Although Wally is a robot, we got to sympathize with Wally because he is the only creature left on Earth waiting for life you know, to develop or searching for or no, signs of life in the in that particular world uh, introduced by the Wally creators. Or you might have characters like uh, uh, Mike Wachowski and Sally in in Monsters Inc. Okay, so in the onset it might be just a story about monsters, but if we got get to know more about their characters, we will learn that. Uh, Sully is actually trying to be a father to Boo. Okay? And we got to sympathize more with the character of Sully. Although at the start, no, the scare of children no, to gather electricity. No? Uh, Sully being the top scare. No? And with his friend Mike Wachowski no, supporting him. Okay. And later on, uh, uh, this is not just a physical story of monsters is scaring children. Or later on, monsters trying to hide you know, that a child got into their world. But it's actually about one of the monsters trying to be a father to the child. Okay. So that's the inner story. So similarly in Up, you, know, you have... Uh, physically, you, know, you have the story of uh, Mr. Fredrickson, Carl, uh, trying to uh, bring the house to Paradise Falls because that's his promise to his dead wife, Ellie. However, later on, it was actually trying to move on. You know, and from the death of the wife and the house and the uh, objects inside the house represent the memories of Ellie or the dead wife. And then later on, when Mr. Fredrickson got to meet uh, Russell, you know, the Boy Scout, okay, at first, you know, physically, we just know that Russell is trying to get the only remaining badge left you know, for him to complete all the badges you know, as a Boy Scout. But it's actually, later on, it's actually about looking for a father figure, which he got, you no know, spoiler alert, at the end 
of the animated film through the help of Mr. Fredrickson. Okay, so uh, not all stories no, are narrative in nature. So uh, not all films are narrative in nature. So they won't have a story to tell. But at least you have a concept working on a particular theme. Okay, so you have a thematic aspect. Okay? However, a narrative story can have a physical story, an inner story, and a thematic story if you have a lesson to share, a moral lesson. Uh, or uh, you would like to share this idea or ideology no, to your audience. Okay? Like, for example, uh, love conquers all. Okay? Or uh, times gold, for example. Okay? Or ano ba? Uh, the most important thing in life is still your family. Okay? So, those are just examples of themes in story. Okay, so you might also want to watch no uh, the French film I was mentioning earlier, Two Days One Night. Okay, and you can look at the story template provided okay, after watching. So I'll just Go through this one, no. Uh, if you have your character Sandra played by uh, Marion Cotillard, okay. So you have the start, uh, the exposition or Act One. Uh, you're introduced to the family, the ongoing desire to have a secure job, to have the family, and then of course for your story to continue. No, your character would have something na would commit something bad or would commit something wrong, commit a mistake, okay? Uh, and then you'll have a story to develop because of that wrong decision, okay? So you'll be introduced to the world of the character, no, as a as a worker. For example, and when she lost her job, no, uh, he wants her co-workers to give up their bonus okay, because she was given the choice to convince her co-workers. No, if she wants to get her job back, she needs to convince her co-workers to give up their bonus so the boss or the company would be able to pay for her income or pay her income. Okay, so what is at stake? Of course, her job. And then throughout the the film, no, she tries to convince her co-workers no, to achieve her goal to get her job back. Okay. However, of course, some co-workers wouldn't want to give up their bonus because they have they also have their own families to support. And to add to that, you have a very oppressive manager. So now you have an obstacle in the character's goal no, to uh, the character's uh, attempt no, to achieve her goal or to solve her problem. In this case, it comes in the form of the oppressive manager. And later on, you have a series of events, complications, consequences, turning points. And then your character will come into a realization that her co-workers have equal needs, no? needs equal to hers. Okay? And when she realizes this, no? uh, when she was offered her job back, she turns it down because that's the character development. Okay? Realizing that it's not just about her. Okay? It's about other people. No, getting their own security, okay? getting their job, getting their bonus, so your character transformed. So even if your character did not achieve the goal or was not able to solve the problem, at least you have a character development or a character goal. 
And in this case, it's solidarity with her workers. So similarly, in starting over again, even if Tony Gonzaga's character, Jeannie, was not able to achieve her goal of getting back together with Marco, the ex-boyfriend, no? uh, played by Piolo Pascual. At least, no, at the end of starting over again, she was able to move on. So looking at these discussions no, on characterization in film, the different components, the different aspects, uh, the uh, different dimensions, the three dimensions uh, in characterization, physical, sociological, and psychological, how would you improve your story? Or how would you make your story work okay, if it didn't work at the start?